Hi, welcome. My name is Katherine Kitterman. And I'm Rebecca Clark. And we're the co-authors of Thinking Women, A Timeline of Suffrage in Utah. We're here to tell you just a little bit about the book today uh, because it's an important anniversary coming up. This year, 2020, marks the anniversary of several significant events for voting rights for women. Uh, the first is that 150 years ago, women in Utah cast their first votes, and they were actually the first to vote in the whole United States under an equal suffrage law. That was a big deal, and that started a lot of movement in the suffrage movement to gain women's right to vote across the country. Um, then also, this year is the 100th anniversary of one of the cornerstone pieces of that movement, which was the 19th Amendment. That was ratified in 1920, 100 years ago this August. And then also this August, we're celebrating the 55th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, which extended protections for voting rights for women and men of color. So this year is an important year to think about the men and women who have worked for equality, worked to make their voices heard, and especially remember the contributions that others have made so that we could have our voice and use our voice in society. We're gonna to talk to you a little bit about what our book does, how it tells that story here in Utah, and what we learned while we were putting it together. Yeah, so one of our main goals when we started out with this project was that we really wanted to reinsert Utah women back into the narrative. Their story had been kind of lost or misconstrued over time. And we felt it was really important to put the focus back on those women who were so involved in this movement. Um, so we initially just started with the title of focusing on thinking women, uh, because that's a quote that comes from one of the main suffrage leaders here in Utah, Emmeline B. Wells. She said, I believe in women, especially thinking women. And we loved how that focused on the agency and the thoughtfulness of the women who were involved and who participated for a full 50 years in the suffrage movement here in Utah. Um, they were deliberate and they were agents unto themselves. They weren't just doing what they were told like so many anti-suffragists warned against. And they were really committed to the cause of women's equality and I just loved how, as we went through this process, time and again, we learned that they were neither pawns nor militants. They just wanted to use their voice to help make their community a better place. I love that. And as we were going through, we, we saw, as we looked in the history and looked in the sources that we could find about women's suffrage activism here in Utah, we, we saw that there were so many women involved. It was really a grassroots movement across the territory and state. And I think that's one of the important pieces that this book adds as well. Um, I'm gonna show you the cover of the book here. Uh, it's probably gonna show backwards, but <laughs> this, this is a, it's a beautiful book. And one of the things that we did with this is we made it in a timeline format. So you can see there's, there's pictures and words and it takes you through the story for a full 50 years. So there's a lot of history in this. There's a lot that women were doing here in Utah as well as nationally between 1870 and 1920 to win voting rights. Um, but this story breaks it down and shows what women in Utah were doing, how they were affected by what was happening nationally, and how they interacted with and learned from national suffrage leaders, as well as vice versa. So one of the things that I love about this book is that it's full of images, and that makes it a little bit more fun to read, hopefully, but it also brings the story to life um, by helping you to imagine the thousands of women who were involved, who were going to meetings, who were circulating petitions, who were raising their voices, talking to their local politicians to try to get um, their voices heard and to be part of the political process making decisions for our society. Um, so as we were going through to, to create this book, there were a lot of things that we didn't know about the story. There were pieces that we had and there were pieces that we didn't have. Um, but we went to a lot of great Utah sources to find this material. We found a lot about what women were doing for suffrage in newspapers. So we pulled a lot from there. And then we pulled a lot from the Library of Congress and other national archives to bring in that part of the story and those rich images as well. So you'll find a, a full span of suffrage activity here and lots of new women and new characters um, in the story because we feel that it's important that their voices um, can be heard the way that they were advocating for themselves. Rebecca, do you wanna to talk to us a little bit about what you learned? Um, something that was a really interesting story or tidbit that you came across as we were putting the book together. Yeah, um, well, there are so many uh, little pieces that came out that we would get so excited about in the middle of the night when we discovered them. It really, as you said, 
was kind of an excavation project of discovering this um, material and these events that had been lost to history. One of my favorite anecdotes that I found um, was it involves two women who were serving in the legislature together. So Martha Hughes Cannon was the first female state senator in the whole United States, and she actually won her election running against her husband. So she beat him out and won the seat in the Senate. And then, it, so she's a fantastic. Um, it's a great story all in itself. Wonderful stories across the board. But I, I knew her story, but what I loved was discovering that in the next term, she served with just one other woman who was in the House of Representatives here in Utah, Alice Merrill Horn. And as I've come to know her story, um, I've just fallen in love with Alice and her feistiness and how she negotiated her way through the politics um, to really get what she wanted and what she felt was important for the community. She was very committed to the arts. She's known as the first lady in Utah of the arts. And um, she and Martha Hughes Cannon worked closely together. They cooperated and collaborated and strategized how to get their most important pieces of legislation passed. And so Alice would work in the House, Martha would work in the Senate so that they could uh, be successful in the pieces of legislation that really mattered to them. For Martha, it was a public health bill because she was a doctor. And for Alice, it was the art bill that created the first state-run Institute of Art in the nation. And when these two bills were right at the point of being debated and they were trying to make sure they locked in the votes, they would scatter yellow flowers across the desks of all the male legislators there. A yellow was the color of suffrage. And so it was this really clear reminder to the senators and representatives that they were working with that they represented a whole host of women and that they had that power and support behind them. And it just shows the power that women's suffrage had to enact change. I um, love that. I know, right? What, I, one of the things that I loved is how it shows how we can support each other as women. And that's one of the takeaways, I think, for us. What are some of the takeaways or one takeaway that you hope people um, discover through this book, Catherine? Yeah, I was thinking about this, reading back through, and Utah women have this unique story because um, women's voting rights were extended in 1870. They voted for 17 years. They lost the vote due to anti-polygamy legislation, regained it. Um, but still, by the time the 19th Amendment became law in 1920, women in Utah had been voting for a total of 41 years. They had spent a lot of time defending their political involvement on both a local and national stage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that stuck out to me so much. We have so many great quotes from local suffrage leaders in territories across Utah who are saying things like, I can go to the polls to vote just as harmlessly as I go to the post office. This doesn't compromise uh, my womanliness. I can, I can do both things, right? And I thought that was, that. those are funny, funny little anecdotes there. Um, but then you also see things that women were saying things like, we've accepted the gospel of equal rights and we need to spread that. And I think that's such a touching point too, because as I read these women's words, as, as I saw what they were doing as they paraded and marched and petitioned and lobbied, you can see how dedicated they were to this ideal, that they truly felt that women are equal to men and that we needed to have a voice in society, that we needed to have ways to affect change and create better communities together with men and women. And that's one thing that I really think comes through from so many of these women's words is their, again, their dedication to that cause. Yeah, that's yeah. so important for us now, right? To, to see that and be inspired by that because the process for equality is really not over still. And so we can all learn from them. Absolutely. I think that one of the things I hope people take away from this book is a greater commitment to engage and dig in in our own communities, right? And many of the women who were here who were part of the suffrage movement didn't necessarily run for political office or lead suffrage organizations, but they participated and they made a difference in the community where they lived in their own ways. And so I think there's a lot we can learn from their involvement and from their, again, their willingness to engage and dig in. Um, and we can learn from that story. There's so much, as you say, there's so much left to do to make our societies more just, more fair, more inclusive and more equal. And these women show us that that didn't end in 1920 or 1965, that there's work to do today and that we can 
step in and speak out as they did and, and make change happen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really hope that you check out this book. It was a uh, work of love, really. And we enjoyed every bit, every bit of it. And so we hope that you enjoy it too. You can find the book at Deseret Book in stores or online and also on Amazon. And we hope that we can all learn from it and use our voices to make our communities a better place. Yeah, I hope it's a good tool for you. We also have a lot more of the research and stories and photographs behind the stories in the book available mm -hmm. at the website for utahwomenshistory.org. Again, that's utahwomenshistory.org. Thank you for joining us. Thanks.